Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Analyzing Phase Noise with Rodian Schwartz FSWP. In this presentation, we'll go over how to configure and interpret phase noise measurements using the FSWP Phase Noise Analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of phase noise and how it's measured. If you're unfamiliar with phase noise or need a brief refresher, you may want to watch the presentation Understanding Phase Noise Fundamentals before continuing with this presentation. And if you'd like to learn more about the cross-correlation method used by the FSWP, you might also be interested in the presentation Understanding Phase Noise, the Cross-Correlation Method. Let's start with a brief overview of the FSWP. The Rodian Schwartz FSWP is a phase noise analyzer that measures phase noise directly using a digital phase demodulator. The FSWP can also make many spectrum analyzer measurements, such as transient analysis, spur search, etc. The FSWP can also be configured with a second measurement path that allows phase noise measurements using the cross-correlation method, and this improves both speed and sensitivity. In addition, the FSWP can make simultaneous but separate measurements of amplitude and phase noise, can measure phase noise and pulse signals, and can measure additive or residual phase noise using an internal or external source. Additional phase noise related features include integrated phase noise measurements, Allen variants, and VCO testing using integrated DC sources. In this presentation, we'll focus on standard phase noise measurements, but separate presentations are also available on many of these other topics. To start the phase noise application on the FSWP, simply press the Mode key and then select Phase Noise from the list of available modes. This is the main phase noise measurement screen. In most cases, the source signal will be automatically detected and measured by the FSWP. By default, phase noise results are given as both raw and smooth traces of the single sideband phase noise. Phase noise is also shown as numeric values or spot noise, and if cross-correlation is used, the gray area beneath the trace shows the cross-correlation gain. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to modify default values and behavior and how to use additional features and functionality to make and interpret phase noise measurements. When started, the FSWP automatically scans the spectrum looking for a signal. If one is detected, the measurement starts automatically. This auto search function is enabled by default. If auto search is disabled, the frequency can be manually entered using signal frequency. Even if the frequency is manually entered, the FSWP will correct small frequency errors as long as signal count is enabled. Disabling signal count causes the FSWP to measure at exactly the user specified signal frequency. In addition, the parameters used in auto search, such as the frequency range to check and the required levels, can be configured using auto search config. This function also allows you to define a capture range for tracking a drifting signal. Once a signal has been acquired, most phase noise measurement parameters are specified using noise config. These include configuring the start and stop frequency offsets, the resolution bandwidth, and the cross-correlation settings. We'll cover these first three groups of parameters in much more detail. Sweep settings can also be used to increase the sweep or average count, which can help smooth the trace. Sweep forward causes the phase noise plot to be drawn from right to left, that is from smallest to largest offset. Of all the parameters, start and stop offsets are the most important. These are simply entered as numeric values and are shown at the bottom of the results display. Here, our measurement is from 100 Hz to 1 MHz. The next most important settings are for cross-correlation. Cross-correlation improves sensitivity by removing instrument noise from the phase noise results. The number of cross-correlations to be performed can be manually or automatically defined and are configured for each half decade. There's a reason why different numbers of cross-correlations are used at different offsets from the carrier. For example, phase noise tends to be higher at smaller offsets, so a lower number of cross-correlations are needed. The DUT phase noise is much higher than the instrument noise. On the other hand, DUT phase noise is usually lower at larger frequency offsets, so a higher number of cross-correlations are needed to reduce the effects of instrument noise at these larger offsets. Let's look at this graphically. Single sideband phase noise is plotted on a logarithmic scale, and a decade is simply the distance between orders of magnitude. Here, 100 kHz to 1 MHz. 
A half decade, as you might expect, is simply half of this distance. Note that since we're using a logarithmic scale, half of the distance from 100 kilohertz to 1 megahertz is 300 kilohertz, not 500 kilohertz. On the FSWP, we configure the number of cross-correlation counts for each half decade. For the first two half decades, only a single cross-correlation is done. The numbers in the green bar show the number of cross-correlations for each half decade. In the half decade from 30 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, the number of cross-correlations is 37. And for the three highest frequency half decades, 400 cross-correlations are used to obtain the measurement result. Using different numbers of cross-correlations at different offsets increases efficiency and reduces measurement time. Now let's look at the rest of the cross-correlation parameters. Cross-correlation factor increases the number of cross-correlations for each range. For example, here are the counts for each half decade with a cross-correlation factor set to 1. If we increase this to 10, then the first half decade count is multiplied by 10 and the other half decades are scaled appropriately. Note that increasing the number of cross-correlations also usually smooths the trace. Another important configuration parameter is cross-correlation optimization, which stops running cross-correlations when measurement results stop improving. This can speed up measurements. An improvement is defined as a threshold value, which is the difference or distance between the phase noise trace and the cross-correlation gain indicator. So now would probably be a good time to explain this gain indicator. The cross-correlation gain indicator appears as a gray region beneath the phase noise plot. The size and shape of this region depend on the cross-correlation factor used. If the trace lies on the indicator, increasing the number of cross-correlations should increase the separation. This leads to more accurate phase noise results because it reduces the amount of uncorrelated instrument noise in our measurement. When the distance between this trace and this region is greater than the threshold, additional cross-correlations will not improve phase noise results, although they may smooth the trace even further. Resolution bandwidth also affects phase noise measurements. On the FSWP, different resolution bandwidths can be applied for each half decade, and these are specified as a percentage of the measurement range. Typically, smaller resolution bandwidths are used closer to the carrier, and larger resolution bandwidths are used further away. This helps to reduce measurement time. As with most other parameters, resolution bandwidth can be configured manually or automatically. The parameter ultra small resolution bandwidths is simply used to lower the minimum resolution bandwidth, which can be helpful when measuring very close to the carrier. Now that we've covered the important noise configuration parameters, let's spend a minute talking about ways of displaying phase noise results. Smoothing is used to clean up traces. For example, here is the raw or unsmooth trace, and here is the smooth trace. Smoothing is performed after data is acquired, that is, it affects the display, not the results. Smoothing is also applied per trace, and it's possible to display both smoothed and unsmoothed traces simultaneously, as shown here. Smoothing is configured under trace config, and is specified as a percentage. Larger values increase the smoothness of a trace. Another display feature is spur removal, which is also enabled under trace config. Many phase noise curves contain spurious signals, which appear as peaks or spikes on the trace. Spurious signals, or spurs, are caused by interfering signals, not by phase noise, so we often want to remove them from our results. This is done by defining a threshold in dB. Enabling spur removal hides spurs which lie more than this number of dB above the trace. One last trace feature to be aware of is the ability to choose which type of noise to plot. As mentioned earlier, the FSWP can separate phase noise and amplitude noise and display either the combined result or plot them separately. In the trace config menu, we select whether we want phase noise, amplitude noise, or both. The type of trace, here AM noise only, is shown on the top of the results display. The display config soft key brings up a list of the different phase noise measurements supported by the FSWP. The first of these measurements is noise spectrum, which is the plot of phase noise versus offset that we've already covered. Additional measurements include Allen variance and deviation, spot noise, spurious measurements, and integrated measurements. 
The FSWP also supports additional ways of displaying noise spectrum, such as SV of F and SY of F, but we won't be covering these in this presentation. Let's start with spot noise, since this is another common way of representing phase noise measurement results. In addition to the standard single sideband phase noise plot, it can be helpful to have numerical values of phase noise at different offsets. These spot values are normally reported in table form and are usually made on the decade offsets that we discussed earlier, but spot noise at user-defined offsets is also supported on the FSWP. A short while ago, we mentioned that spurious signals are external sources of noise that cause peaks or spikes in the phase noise trace, and we showed how these could be hidden using the trace config menu. The spurious list measurement, on the other hand, creates a list of spurs that are above a user-defined threshold. The results are reported per spur and include the offset frequency and power of the spur, as well as the measured jitter. Another type of measurement involves integrating between a pair of offsets in the phase noise curve. These are called integrated or residual measurements, and the integration range, or ranges, can be specified by the user. Using this range, the FSWP automatically calculates and displays residual phase modulation in degrees, residual frequency or amplitude modulation in hertz, and jitter in units of seconds. If you're looking for phase noise in degrees, or want to convert measured phase noise to jitter, these are provided by the integrated measurement function. The final measurement we'll look at is Allen variance or Allen deviation. Unlike phase noise, which is a measure of short-term frequency stability, Allen variance measures long-term frequency stability, with long-term being on the order of minutes, hours, days, etc. Allen variance shows how much the dot frequency varies from the specified or average value. Note that Allen deviation is simply the square root of Allen variance. There are many ways to measure Allen variance, but the FSWP calculates it directly from the phase noise results using a rather complicated formula. Fortunately, the only thing you need to specify for an Allen variance measurement are the start and stop values of tau, the observation time. The measurement and results are performed automatically. We won't go into details of Allen variance in this presentation, but the minimum of this curve is usually the part that we're most interested in. Because of the nature of the measurement, Allen variance measurements can take a long time to run, so the remaining time indicator at the bottom of the screen may be helpful when measuring Allen variance. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz FSWP is a dedicated phase noise analyzer that supports numerous phase noise measurement types. Results are most often displayed as a single sideband plot of noise spectrum and or as spot noise at specified offsets. By adding a second internal measurement path, the FSWP can use cross-correlation to remove the influence of instrument noise and greatly increase measurement sensitivity. Additional phase noise-related measurements available on the FSWP include Allen variance and deviation, measurements of spurious signals, and integrated phase noise measurements. The FSWP can also perform many standard spectrum analyzer type measurements, such as spur search, noise figure, etc., and has integrated high-quality power supplies for testing and characterizing voltage-controlled oscillators. This concludes our presentation, Analyzing Phase Noise with Rodian Schwartz FSWP. If you're interested in learning more about the FSWP or about phase noise measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.